All right, today we are going to get the crank in the LS1 with the new bearings. We're going to plastic gauge uh, the mains as well, make sure the clearances look good. So obviously it's super important to know and keep in order or to know and remember which order these came out and put them back in the exact same way. Um, however, these are numbered, which is pretty cool. One, two, three, four, five. Um, these bolts are not torque to yield. These are reusable. Um, the ones that go in the side, because these LS Gen 3 motors have six bolt mains, um, those ones are not because they've got factory sealant on them. Uh, I did order them. They're not in yet. I didn't want to use the new ones I've ordered to do the torquing procedure to find out, you know, the plastic gauge, um, excuse me, to check the clearances. Um, so I actually found some of the old ones. I believe this is them. I'm actually missing a couple, um, but it's all right because... I'm just going to send these, uh, send these right in just for this, this purpose and then pull them back out. So I'll clean those up. We'll get started. Um, these are the bearings I got. They are the Clevite bearings. I believe they are the P series for passenger. I don't know. It, it wasn't the high performance series, which is the H series. Um, this is the part number MS 2199 P. Um, I made sure I looked at all of them, made sure the part numbers match and everything they do. All right, so I just cleaned up these surfaces. These are just oil stains uh, in the aluminum. Machine shop guys told me not to worry about it. You can't feel any of it with your finger anyway. Um, but just give it a quick clean. Uh, just cleaned out all of these passages. Give it a quick shot of air in there just to make sure there's no uh, you know dust sitting in these channels, <sighs> which is very easy to get. I see a tiny, couple tiny little fibers in my rag. Um, but no, we're gonna go ahead and install it. Um, one of these, um, you'll see is is quite a bit bigger uh, than the other ones. And now I had thought this was supposed to go over the rear, but a quick check, it is not. Um, and of course, looking at it now, I see that the number three is smaller in diameter and probably requires a little extra support. So that one is going to go there. Um, you can see these are the bearings that came out of it were beautiful. Again, super low miles. You can still see the factory machining in there. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and uh, put these bearings in there. I did clean the bearings off um, just in case they had a little oil, you know, on the shelf. We're going to, of course, coat these with assembly lube once they are all in position. So I'm just going to start at the front and work my way back. You'll see they each have a little notch on them and a corresponding notch in the block. Just go ahead, just push them in. You'll see it went a little low. So you push in the other side and it'll come right up. All the oil holes line up very nicely. And then you just keep going like that. All right, so I'm going to bring the crank over and just get it seated um, right in these bearings. I'm just going to throw a little extra just on there. Never be too careful, or better safe than sorry, I suppose. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna see, so I cleaned, I didn't clean the raw journals, I just cleaned the main journals. Um, we're just gonna try to sit it right on these bearings as sort of at the same time so that nothing, you know, doesn't hit the front one and twist it or anything. So I'm gonna bring it over and uh, we're just gonna try to get it to, to sit in there as best we can all at once. <clears throat> And it is very heavy. Being as careful as we can here. Yeah, no, 
not too bad. Getting close. All right. Now I said, you know, don't spin it over excessively, but I do just want to make sure it turns in there. Yep, okay. Good, that is perfect. All these still look very good, sitting right where they need to be, flush with the block. All right, so I'm good just off camera, just gonna clean up the main journals. Um, I will install the bearings into those the same way as I did these. Just flip them upside down, press them in there. Um, those bearings do say lower on them, because once the engine's turned the right way, um, they are pointing at the ground, they are lower. So uh, I'll get those, bring those over, and um, show you how we do the plastic gauge as well. All right, so out of your, this is just the sealed power kit um, that ranges from one to three thousandths. Um, so you'll sort of see each one of these is for a main journal, main journal, excuse me, and a um, rod journal. I may not end up doing the rods, um, but so you just cut one little section. And you got to open this up because inside it, it runs the whole length of the uh, of the package, is the Plasti gauge. Um, let me grab it here. You know what? I'm gonna take off my gloves to do this. <clears throat> so you open this up, and without breaking anything, I mean, you do get plenty of it. So if you do break a little bit, it's okay. In, <laughs> I can't get the thing out. In this package. That's your plastic gauge right there. I guess I'll just rip it open. Oh, and it's gone. Found it. All right, so you take it. It's tiny, and you lay it perpendicular, I guess, sort of right across the journal there. And so what's going to happen is we're going to put the um, main cap on, you know, I'll speed it up and do all these, then we'll torque them all to spec, and you don't even turn the crank, you just take it back off, and it's going to expand based on how hard it's compressed from the torquing sequence, and then we'll use this little piece we cut to measure how thick it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that right now. All right, so we have these all torqued down in correct sequence. Doing my best with that awful angle gauge. That thing really stinks. That's a sucky tool. I mean, it'll work. It's not the most accurate thing. And I'm sure, you know, big money buys, buys a nicer one. But these have all been plasti gauge. We're just gonna pop these off, um, same way before, with a little tap, and uh, see how we look.
All right, so after some, quite some time, the main caps are back off. You can see the plastic gauge has been squeezed. <clears throat> and now we use this, which is measuring thousands of inches, to see. See, that's one thousandth, one five, see, it's about two. You know, obviously, it's a little bit different in places, which is not indicative of the bearing. It's, I mean, who knows? It may have rocked around a little bit. But, you know, using the majority of the thing, I think two really fits the bill on that. <clears throat> and then if you, you know, start looking at the other ones as well. Harder to see. You know, that's not easy to film. About two on the nose. Same thing on number three, which I'm very glad about. Impossible to really get my hands down there, but you'll have to take it from me. It's about two. And then same thing there. So it's pretty much 2,000 across the board, which is it's great. All right, now to throw some assembly lube. Get rid of this, obviously. Um, assembly lube, put it all back together all again. All right, after a good few hours of working, we just checked the plastic gauges. <clears throat> These are all incorrectly in their correct orders. Uh, I put the mains back on with some um, assembly lube, both on the journals and on the bearing. I can see that it's squishing out a little bit um, where I can actually see, and uh, that means we've got you know, a good seal. I did sort of figure out how to use this a little bit better. I sort of changed how I had this. I won't obviously do it because I just did it all. I'd set it to zero, put my hand on the block and just hold it, and I actually could get a pretty decent read. Um, so it's still a sucky tool, and when you pull your wrench out of it, a whole bunch of metal flakes come out, which of course I did right over the open exposed journals earlier, so that was great. Um, but we're going to go ahead and see if this thing's going to uh, roll over nice because I have not tried to spin this yet because we've been checking everything. So, without further ado, here we go. Look at that. I honestly had not spun this over yet. That's great. Do it a couple times. Get that assembly lube mixing around. Nice. You know what I have? I have a tool for this, but... Nice. That spins over perfectly. No noises, no rough spots. I'm psyched. That's great. Nice. I am happy about that. I do not have the bolts for the sides yet, um, but they only get torqued to about 18 pounds, feet, or foot pounds, so I'm not hugely worried about it. Um, so once those come in the mail, we'll throw those in and we'll be good to go. But uh, other than that, that's gonna do it for today. Cranks in, torque to spec, and we're in good shape. All right, thanks for watching.